a sec? <laughs> I implore you. Um... Nice day we're having. Got a second? Let's give it a go. <laughs> Let's give it a go. <laughs> Let's give it a go. Have my thanks. The Duke has stamped out most of the troops who invaded Fraldarius. As things stand, a clash on royal soil and eventually within the capital is inevitable. As you are the only blood kin I have, my lord, I pray we might find a way to resolve this conflict peacefully. Bah, what rubbish. He sings of conciliation, but I know a threat when I read it. Shouldn't you take better care of a letter from your dear nephew, my lord? He's not expecting a reply. The creature means to slay me. Your fear of Prince Dimitri runs deeper than I thought. You shouldn't have missed your chance four years ago in Dusker, or two years ago during the suppression of the Rebellion. That's twice you failed to kill him. I've learned my lesson. 
A lion's cub is still a lion, and one cannot slay a lion with a clumsy scheme. It's those monstrous eyes, Cornelia. They terrify me. The boy is a vicious animal, yet he attempts to feign actual grief that we can't find common ground. The aberrance of it shakes me to my core. <laughs> I understand completely. Every night since I killed my brother, I dream a lion is ripping out my throat. You'll run yourself ragged if you live your days in fear of revenge. You were meant to rule Fargus, and you have the power to make it so. Your royal army is the finest in the realm, and if I may be so bold, you also have me. Put your worries to rest, my king. Sleep deeply and without fear. I'm so utterly tired. Tired of being afraid. Tired of what I've become. All of it. I see. And how much longer until Talus gives the word? I know only that something is amiss in the Imperial capital. Curse it all! I am not waiting a thousand years for that doddering old fool to act! Rally the Western Lords and their troops, and be quick about it. Have them make ready to intercept that whelp. As you command, Cleobulus. According to our scouts, the enemy has positioned their troops on the capital streets. So they can use the townsfolk as shields when we take the fight to them. But well, now that we know their strategy, our next move will be critical. A victory stained with the people's blood achieves nothing. We'll need to move our forces swiftly, but with caution. To do nothing of yet. Hmm. I thought not. Your Highness, will you truly be able to strike Rufus down when the time comes? I will do what is required of me. Preparations are complete, Your Highness. The people are waiting for you, Dimitri. Let's not keep them any longer. No, we'd best not. You're our commander, but you look like you're heading for a funeral. Could you maybe try not being so insufferable? Apologies for my demeanor. I've more than a few things on my mind. But very well. Let's begin our final war council. You look pale. Not keen on fighting your own blood? Sadly, I saw this fight coming long ago. Then what's the problem? Now that I've brought the fight to the streets of the capital, I wonder if my actions are right. Most of the people here favor keeping the royal line of succession. That's because my father and the kings before him maintained peace inside these walls. But ever since my uncle seized power, the people have been forced to endure his licentious reign. Did you know they asked me to assume the throne before my time at the Academy? They said only a true king could undo Rufus's misrule. So why didn't you? Because it would have divided the kingdom. Just as it's doing now. Yet had I supported my uncle's claim, it would have been open rebellion. And the only way to prevent such a rebellion is to invade the capital and kill the regent. In other words, I cannot restore my grandfather's peace without first breaking it. In that case, there's no reason to hesitate. You know fighting is the only answer here. You just have to accept it. <sighs> my apologies. I have a bad habit of agonizing over such things. And as all of you have come this far to help me, the least I can do is make an attempt at optimism.
As we feared, the soldiers are using the townsfolk as shields. What cowards! And our first priority is to secure the people safe. My own here. Wait. We'll start by eliminating guards on the capital perimeter. Commence the attack. This will go faster if we split into two groups. They're coming. the Out of the way. I almost broke a sweat there. Next. is secure. Things should be easier now that we know our backs are safe. Open the gates and seize the town. And ensure no harm comes to the people. Ferdiad is large. We should divide and conquer. Hey, aren't the front gates still closed off? We should probably open them up so we can get reinforcements in here, yeah? A fine idea. And if things go awry, we might need another way out. Gotta keep aiming higher. Stole your thunder there. Thank 
forgive me, my lord. I see our enemy is somewhat competent. Deal with this, Viscount Clyman. You're done! Gotta keep aiming high. Worry not, Cornelia. We will save Prince Dimitri from that vile puppeteer who controls him. We need to take care of those soldiers before we're boxed in. I suggest we again divide our soldiers to deal with the multiple threats of us. Your Highness. I wasn't up to the task. should be safe for the time being. Let's press on to the castle. How do we breach the castle with the drawbridges up? These people are hopelessly outnumbered. 
Unleash our units from the strongholds and crush them all. Yeah. This could be our chance. There are controls by the castle gates that lower the drawbridges. We can do so from within the strongholds. Your Highness, the troops that escaped the castle have taken up position in the surrounding strongholds. No, that won't do. We must retake them at once and ensure the town is safe for good. If you're here to rescue us, give us the honor of joining you in battle. Might be time for this. No, not yet. Take it. This area is secure. Not a moment too soon, it seems. The main entrance is blocked. We need to find another way in. Well done. Now to lower the drawbridge. Now, if we lower the other drawbridge, we'll be able to attack the enemy from both sides. I clearly underestimated the royal wealth. Time for someone to put him in his place. I'll show you no mercy! <laughs> Controls. Now that we have access to both the east and west bridges, it's time to breach the capital, corner the traitors, and strike them down. My, this is your lucky day. I've decided that you deserve my personal attention. Ah, fate. You truly are whimsical. Will today mark my death or his? Either way, 
This boss will finally come to a close. So, it's come to this at last. Well, if you want my head, then come clear it. I intend to unlock it. Our prizes, knights! We will defend our needs to the last! My uncle seems determined to not surrender. Which means he gives me no other choice. I should have killed you at dusk when I had the chance. Take you for the love. Kill me! Avenge your father! Find that man! And take him away! Here it comes! You're done!
Possess. Sure is. But if you think I need it to be, think again. You little beasts. None of this would be happening if not for that old man Look at me getting wrapped up in my fun again. But sadly, I must bid you farewell. She's slippery, that one. Your Highness, we are moving Rufus to a cell and preparing him for questioning. Good, thank you. I will join you shortly. Raise your voices with me, friends. You fought hard this day, and now... Victory is ours! <laughs> Got it. I think I've grown. Stronger. We'll see about that. Gotta remember. I suppose. I won't let myself stop here. Gotta keep aim. Best use this power. No, this is not my peak. Hey, I'm getting better. I could use this. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Something you feel like saying? No. All traitors get put to the sword. It's his duty as king. Final words? None for you. But tell me something, boy. Does it trouble you to slay your own kin? <laughs> What a surprise. I did not think you capable of sympathy, craven monster that you are. Yes. But either way, I do what I must. Well, to perish by your hand. It is a fate that I much deserve. Which leads the lords Elidor, Mateus, and Clyman. We believe they, as well as many powerful Western lords, were accomplices. Along with the Grand Duke, they seem to have received large sums of thinking this to be recompense for the assassination. In 1171, the mage Cornelia... That's the year when my step-uncle, Lord Arundel, brought Adel... Correct. 
We think Lord Arundel and his followers... As I suspected. Thank you, Your Highness. If we continue wringing information out of them at this pace, we'll... My uncle's attendants must also conf... But now that things have come this far, we can't expect the Western Lords to stay silent. We need a way to keep them far from power. Oh, there are always ways. Pre yes, I suppose so. Let us, for now... Sp Is that... If we announce that Rufus was involved in the tragedy of Dusker... I will not feed my people half-truths. They deserve to know. I've always admired that candor, Your Highness. Yet such news is sure to create a degree of unrest in the kingdom. So you suggest we bury the truth? If the kingdom is ever to part ways with our bloody past. Fine words, though I doubt they'll appease the people of Dusker. Nor the rest of Fargus, many of whom will not be so quick to forgive. <laughs> we thought you might... I will resign the title of Duke and pass it to my heir. Spare me, Rodrigue. One person with wild ideas is already one... It's not wild at all, Matthias. Someone must bear responsibility for what happened in Dusker. People will naturally seek to point the finger at His Highness, and we need him unsullied if he is to lead. Someone has to get down in the mud and bear the slings and arrows for him. Who better for such a task than me? Rodrigue will abandon his title and work with Dedu to restore harmony between our people. I'm not asking him to take his life. Rather, he offered to spend it to set things to rights. In that case, we've only to deal with the issue of the throne. I believe we should move forward with your coronation straight away. I agree. My time at the officers again. Obviously, Felix won't be able to return either. I've already had a word and told him what must be done. <laughs> yes, I have. As for you, Gustav, you But I abandoned my homeland. There can be no place... I will make a place for you. It... It would be my great honor, Your Highness. Send word to the Church and the Lords. Count Galatea will be in charge of contacting the South. Now, there's another topic I'd like to discuss. You still working, Dimitri? Have you even slept since the battle? <laughs> Never mind that. There's a favor I've been meaning to ask of you. It won't happen right away. But I'm considering the formation of a new private army. I need someone to captain them, and I was hoping it might be you. And what does the leader of the kingdom need with a private army? I fear my uncle may have rubbed off on too many of my knights. I'm not saying they're all bad, but it's clear as day that bribery ran rampant. To rectify the matter, I'm... These next several years will be an age of civil war, and I want to be surrounded with the best and most loyal soldiers I can find. Well, that does sound interesting. Still, I'm just a regular old grunt. Why put me in charge? Because this will be an army of commoners, not knights and nobles. A mercenary like you is far more likely to earn their trust than some stuffy noble who's never known a... Please, allow me to be clear. This is not... Are you kidding? I'm in. Having put down Rufus's revolt and ended his uncle's life, Dimitri draws closer to the truth regarding the tragedy of Dusker and also begins the process of ascending the throne. All the while, the Adrestian Empire deals with a fierce power struggle in its capital, Anbar, while the Leicester Alliance finds themselves pitted against an invading Olmyran horde. Realizing the troubles of Fodlin will fall squarely on her young student's shoulders, Archbishop Rhea closes the Officer's Academy and permits her charges to return home. Azure Gleam to War It is the end of 1181. Two years have passed since the Officers' Academy closed its doors. After ascending the throne, Dimitri labors to bring peace to the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. With Edelgard ruling as the Emperor of Adrestia and Claude leading the Leicester Alliance, 
the three erstwhile schoolmates strike out as the next generation of leaders. A new era is dawning in Fodlan, and much teeters at the brink of great change. The first tremors of a major upheaval rock the land as Edelgard declares war on the central church. Pardon my lateness, Your Majesty. You needn't worry, Felix. I know your duties are many. Though, I'm afraid we could not wait for you to begin the discussion. This is about the Empire's declaration of war against the Central Church, yes? Indeed. As you're aware, we have already begun accepting refugees from Garrett Mock. But a few days ago, I received a confidential request from Seteth, asking us to protect the higher-ranking members of the Church, including Lady Rhea herself. Of course, we'd only meet this eventuality were Garrett Mock to fall. As it stands, we find ourselves quite literally stuck between the Empire and the Church. If I might, Your Majesty, troubling as it may be, I believe it prudent for us to reject this proposal from the Church outright. Offering them shelter will only serve to provoke an invasion from the Empire. This matter of the Southern Church concerns me as well, but I believe we have more important matters to be fussing over at the moment. Your counsel is much appreciated, Viscount Elidor, but I assure you, things are not as cut and dry as you make them out to be. The mandate granted to the King of Fargus and all the lords who serve under him is given legitimacy only by the grace of the Church. Are we to renounce the very heart of this kingdom simply because we shudder at the thought of invasion? War will always come, at one point or another, and some degree of suffering is purely inevitable. You know- You dare speak of suffering, do you? When the blaze of war will not scorch your lands in the north as it does ours? I would normally agree that those of us from the northern territory should hold less sway in this discussion. But if Garrick Mach were to fall, the war front would not halt in the west. Your Majesty, what of House Roe or Galatea, or the others in the south? Not a word from Count Roe as it stands, but I did receive a missive from Count Galatea. It read, My people are not fools enough to rejoice in the surrender of their territories to invaders. There is no morality in turning our backs on the institution at the very foundation of our lives. Your Majesty, we owe a great debt to the Central Church for their role in quelling the uprising two years ago. To not repay such generosity and kind. And if that happens, we might find ourselves right back in the same mess as before. They lack the crest of Blathid, but there's no small number of nobles who might crawl out of the woodwork claiming royal blood. The Kingdom has already seen the turmoil and division such claimants can bring after the death of King Klaus. But Duke Frogdarius! Surely we are better served attempting to head off the very real and imminent war at hand, instead of debating hypothetical unrest? I don't want my people to suffer the pain of conflict. But does anyone here really think the Empire will simply stop if we appease their every demand? Suppose we do let the Empire take the Archbishop. And suppose we accept this new Southern Church. Then what? I imagine the Empire plans to install the Bishop of the Southern Church, Count Varley, in Lady Rhea's place. I fear I've heard nothing good concerning either the man himself or his teachings. They purport to be an arm of the Church of Seros, but the Southern Church is nothing more than a mouthpiece for the Empire at large. In other words, rejecting the Central Church in favor of this new Southern one would be no different from flat-out accepting Imperial rule. It's hard to say just how they would treat our kingdom were such events to unfold, though I imagine it would involve heavy taxation for the express purpose of bleeding Fargus dry and filling the Imperial coffers. <sighs> Do you have something to add, Duke? Not really, no. I was just... The question's simple. Do we hand over our kingdom and subject ourselves to Imperial rule or not? I believe the Margrave has been quite clear as to what will happen if we give in to the Empire's demands. We've all been informed of the rapid reformation their region has undergone. Many aspects of which I admire, I'm not ashamed to say. 
But an old, stubborn land like ours isn't suited for such tempestuous change. Radical new freedoms are not what the people of Fargus need right now. They need stability, steady improvement in their daily lives, and real, lasting change can only come from a solid foundation. Sounds like your majesty has made up his mind then. Just say the word and we'll leap into action. <clears throat> the Holy Kingdom of Fargus will hereby offer asylum to the Church of Seros. Everyone, sharpen your blades and prepare for the battles ahead. Gustav, Dudu, make to ride at once. Our intentions must be made clear. Not only to the Church and the Empire, but to Count Roe as well, and all the other lords who failed to answer my summons. Understood, Your Majesty. Hey, did you hear? It sounds like we're gonna be going to war with the Empire. Yeah? Ever since His Majesty ascended the throne, we've been fighting battle after battle through every corner of Fargus. But I never thought we'd be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the actual Empire. I'd be nervous if it even felt real. Don't worry. It'll start feeling very real very quick once the sword starts swinging. You know, that might be the single worst attempt at motivational speaking I've ever heard. Not that I'm much surprised at this point. I can't help but wonder, though. What happens to Fargus now? I feel like things have been steadily improving lately. But not everyone favors His Majesty as I do. Yeah, I hear the grumbles too. But there's not a ruler in the world who doesn't have their fair share of critics, right? All I know is, we wouldn't be where we are now if not for him. I mean, look at me. Saddled with some mysterious power we don't know anything about. And he still chose to put his faith in me. It's only right I return the favor in kind. Oh, and speak of the devil. Am I interrupting something? No, of course not. Please. So, you heard all that, huh? More or less. Now, I apologize for the interruption, but there's an urgent matter at hand. Anything I can do to help? There is. As you know, we've offered asylum to the Central Church in their efforts to flee the Empire. As such, we are to escort the Archbishop herself to the Royal Capital at once. I expect heavy pursuit from the Imperial forces, so I am assembling a team of those I trust most to assist in the mission. Of course, I'll be leading my own regiment into battle. But I was wondering if you'd be willing to accompany me. What, is that it? I'd be glad to. How are things looking at Garrick Mach while we're on the subject? Grim. Neither the Knights of Seros nor the Monastery Ramparts are capable of holding off the Empire's massive military might. I dare say we have precious little time to waste. Prepare to deploy at once. <laughs> that reminds me. How tiresome.
Not good. Ugh. Well, let's see. So the story is. Oh no. What is it? How can I serve? Oh. Hello there. <laughs> Hello there. You should hear this. You should hear this. May I speak with you? I have a request. I'm counting on you. May I have a word? 